Hello everyone, it's Denise with Something Beautiful Handcrafts, and today I am carding wool. Although technically, I'm not carding wool properly. When you card it, you are processing the fibers in a way that they are not lined straight up. And that mix adds air to the fibers, and when they spin, they're fluffy. For lack of a better word but they have more air in between the spun layers so i'm not carding them properly i'm not adding that extra air and they're also still fairly lined up when i finish with them so it's more like i'm using my hand carders as a set of flickers so do i card wool or why don't i card wool for the most part I'm not particularly interested in woolen yarns uh, for the reasons that I don't really like the way they look. They're, they're round and they're fluffy. Um, they have like an extra volume to them, cushion. And that's not really, for the most part, what I want out of the majority of the things that I make. So sometimes when I say that I really don't like uh, carded wool or woolen wools, people will say, well, you're just not doing it properly. And I, I kind of find that a bit insulting, um, as if I can't have my own taste. I've been in the fiber arts long enough to know the kind of yarns that I buy when I bought yarns. And so I know the kind of yarns that I like to work with. So those are the types of yarns that I spend and I spin them worsted. Now, I most certainly can cart properly. I most certainly can spin a woolen yarn. I can definitely long draw. And it's just not the way that I want my yarns to do. But if someone said, you know, make a video on long draw, or someone wanted a woolen yarn, I could most certainly spin that. It's just not my preference. So when I use my hand carters or the giant flick carter, that you'll see in my videos, I am basically just teasing out the end of the fiber and removing uh, vegetable matter or any type of shorts so that I can spin the fiber smoothly. So I'm saying all of to say that, although I have hand carders in front of me, I'm not actually carding wool properly. So this is a meat breed. And that's basically all I can really say about this. Uh, this is part of my study fiber from Praxis Fiber Art Studio in Cleveland. And it was acquired from a meat breeding farm. It's not a particular breed. It's just a, a cross for meat breeding. And um, when Connie got it, she doesn't quite remember where she got it from. So there's no information at all on this sheep right here. So the most I can tell you is that it's a sheep purposely bred for meat. The crimp is moderate. And the staple length is short. It's just a little shorter than I normally like my staple lengths. But uh, since I'm processing this as part of a study... Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so. It's been washed relatively. It was not a heavy grease fleece to begin with. So it didn't need heavy scouring. And I could make some guesses as to what I think it is. Or I should say what type of fleece I think it is and is not. But I'm not going to do that. So first of all, I'm laying the tips down. And I'm actually I'm just picking through this to find which ones are the best formed locks. For the purpose of this video. And the ones that are relatively the cleanest. I'm going to lay those down. And like I said, since I'm not quite properly carding, 
I'm laying the wool down tip end and all the ends are lined up so I'm going to put this off to the side here and so I'm just going to they're just barely touching the corners are barely touching at the ends okay that was nice now during typical carding there would be a particular way to transfer the fibers from one carter to another but like i said i'm not doing that and i'm going to do the tips again so before i start i want to remove some large chunks of vm that i saw because if i run over it again with these carters um, it's going to grind it into the fiber now um these are it's upside down for you isn't it uh, still backwards this is the howard brush company carter i got these on ebay i want to say that this is the 90s, because that makes perfect sense for them to be in the 90s and i forgot to turn my notifications off again sorry about that at some point i remember uh yes 90 teeth per inch and i got this because it's pretty much a middle for me um it it can handle the Angora okay, which would be what I would be flicking out or carding if I was doing any in the alpaca. But still, it doesn't, you know, it's not so fine that it won't allow some Cheviot or something to pass through. Okay, so I'm just going to switch hands. And like I said, I'm not carding, technically. I'm flicking. But this is a lot faster than using the one flicker. A lot easier on my hands, too. Because I was getting stuck in the fingers with that one giant flicker when they're short fibers. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good. That random brown came from um, some merino I had on before there. I wasn't terribly concerned about clearing it off. Okay, now there's a little VM in here. And I could give this another pass if I was interested in getting that out. Because I've got, I've got a little flicking going on. It just kind of flicks it down and off there. That was a nice lift. Look at that. I, I could have stuck I could have actually spun from this uh, two passes ago and a lot of times I do I just like okay that's enough okay so and then I just lift it off okay I don't roll it into a roll lag or a faux lag or Anything like that. This is just perfectly good for me to spin just like this. And it's all a line and I just spin across the tip. And it was just pretty much that simple. Now I'm going to make a teeny uh, tiny video uh, with spinning this. And someone asked about spinning lace yarns. And I, I have a little video where I kind of mention about the drafting zone. But I'm going to make this one just in particular to talk about how to spin the size yarn you want. There's a little exercise in the Spinner's Book of Yarn Design. That's pretty much where I am in the videos for that. With how to... Uh, practice controlling the size of your yarn by spinning thick and thin and it's a wonderful little exercise and you're just practicing as you spin releasing more fiber into the drafting zone and then uh, taking fiber out of the drafting zone and that's basically how you spin the size yarn you want 
Okay, I'm going to show you just kind of real quick. And then you'll have to join me on YouTube in order to see the video about spinning thin and thick. Okay, so here I am with the fiber. You can just kind of barely see that. Let me try to get it so you can, the camera will zoom. It may or may not. Okay, so what's happening is there are so many number of fibers in between both my fingers. This would be the drafting zone, the space in between where I'm holding the fiber, where I'm pinching it at. Okay, so I can turn this with the amount of twist and I get a really good idea of how thin or thick the fiber is going to be with the amount of fiber I put inside the drafting zone. Okay, so now I'm going to put this much fiber in the drafting zone. I'm going to twist it. Okay, and then you can see the difference of the thickness of the yarn based on how much fiber I put in that drafting zone. And this fiber is compressed by twist, but once it gets wet, it's going to puff back up again if I've got this much fiber in the drafting zone. So you can see the difference. Hopefully, you can see the difference between the two. And it's not blurry. I'm trying to move it so it's not too blurry. Okay, so if I want it less, if I want this thinner, I could take it back. Because it happens sometimes when you spin, you're like, oops. Just untwist it and you separate that and pull that fiber so there's less of it in the drafting zone. So that when you twist it, the fiber is thinner. And it's just a matter of hand and eye coordination, eye and muscle memory, that how much fiber you see twists down to a certain amount of fiber. And of course, this is, uh, it changes with the fiber that you're spinning. Some fibers compress really well. And when they are wet finished, they don't expand again. Some fibers don't compress really well. When they wet finish, they don't expand much either. So what you see is what you get. Then there's those fibers that they look like they're compressing really well. And when you uh, wet finish those fibers, they're like whoosh. Like Jacob is one of those. You you feel like you're spinning super thin. Or you, if you're spinning super thin, you're going to be super thin. But you feel like you're really spinning thin. And then when you wet finish Jacob, it's like whoosh. And you're like, wow, that's thicker yarn than I thought it was going to be. Which is why I advocate sampling breed samples okay so then you, you kind of get to know from there all right thank you very much if you want to see the uh, companion episode about me spinning this fiber you can view it through my facebook channel follow the link in my bio to go to my facebook channel and have a great day